What's going on, boys and girls? Super easy tonight. But you've probably seen this a million times. I'm making some sliders, but I'm doing them. I'm doing my sliders. Um, my burger sauce. We're going to um, pretzel buns, cheese, all that other good stuff. We're also going to do some, uh, instead of some crispy onion straws, we're going to do some crispy leeks and uh, throw those on the burger. Super good. Leeks almost like, they almost like melt. They're awesome, awesome onion, man. They really are. So I know you've heard me say it a million times. Trust me. Go find yourself some. You'll never go back. So real quick, what I got going on over here. It's got some buttermilk started, um, just a cup of milk, tablespoon of white vinegar. That's it. Let it sit for about 10 minutes. You got buttermilk. So now what we're going to do, what am I using today? I'll use this guy. So we're going to take our leeks. You can use a mandolin to do this too, but I don't feel like cleaning it. So I'm just going to take the big bulb off and then we're going to make these nice and thin. So we're just going to go down just like that, just like so. Try not to uh, let them roll underneath my knife and cut them because I want, I want to keep them in rings, you know. They're extremely fragile because, like I said, they, they almost melt. But they are fantastic. There's a little sweetness to them. It's, uh, I don't know. They're good. The leaves are actually good too, but they are bitter. But you can use them for a few different things, you know? So we're going to go just like that. Actually, since it's just going to be a few burgers, I think one leak should be good, guys. Just going to break them up a little bit. Pop them out of their little groupings. Just like so. Yeah, that should be plenty for our burgers tonight. I'm only doing a few sliders. My son won't want them. So it'll just be my wife and I's eating them. Daughter's vegan, so she don't eat with us anymore. So just like that. So it should be plenty. So we're just going to take our buttermilk. I'm going to take these guys. And I'm just going to drop them in here. Oh, not this right. That ain't you. Remnants. Something else. I don't even know what that was. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push them down. Let me grab my something to push them with. I'm just gonna submerge these down into this buttermilk. That's it. I wanna let them guys sit. Let them sit for like a half hour or so. Get them real good. And then in the meantime, we're just going to get our quick dredge going here. All right. We just got a little bowl here. We're going to do uh, about a quarter cup of all purpose. I use unbleached. And a, about the same, about a quarter cup of semolina. Make sure they're nice and crispy. And then... We're going to toss in a little cayenne, say about a half teaspoon, put a little more in there, however hot you want it, but that little heat aspect plays real nice with the burger, especially with the burger sauce, and we're going to do about the same with the salt, uh, about a half, half teaspoon, and half teaspoon of black pepper. That's it. Let's give that a good mix. Just like so. All right. We'll be back in about 20 minutes. Get them ready. All right. Let's get our patties ready. I'm just using some ground sirloin tonight. Yes, I know. I'm not, I didn't grind any meat. I didn't take anything out to thaw, so it is what it is. It's still going to be good. Best thing you could ever do when it comes to your burgers is don't overwork your meat. 
I like my burgers to literally hold together just by hopes and dreams, man. So I'm going to start with a nice size golf ball. I'm not going to ball them up. I'm not going to roll them up. I'm just going to make sure that they stay apart, stay together a little bit. And that is it. Overworking your meat, you want it. I don't know. I guess that's that's preference. It, it all really depends on what texture you like in your burger. But I like them to just be, you know, like just that fall apart. It, that I like how smash burgers are. You know what I mean? That's what I like in my burger. I don't like a thick, dense burger patty. You're making burgers, not meatloaf. You know what I mean? I mean, you do you, but I'm telling you. Just give it a shot. Just give it a shot. Don't overwork your meat. So I got two, four, I need one more. All right. Well, pretty silly to just leave that in there. Lunch tomorrow. I'll make it up. All right. So just like so, that's it. That's all I'm doing. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to salt. Burger is really the only meat that I season ahead of time. Everything else I season right before I cook it. No idea why. It's just something that I've done. I've just, I just find that uh, it just stays moist that way. It stays juicy, you know? Alexa, stop. All right. So now I'm going to throw that right over the top. We're going to take old boy here. And oh, I'm going to put the pounder on it. Just like so. Maybe. I'd be smarter than it. Find your ball. I'm doing. Oh, I forgot. I forgot the Lone Ranger over here. That's it. So I'm just let these hang out for a little bit. Get our pan heated up. Burger sauce. It's really good to do this the night before because then it has a chance to just kind of uh, just sit together and get to know each other. It just gets better. But I usually make some of this. I keep it around for a while. It lasts good in the fridge for, you know, a week or two, something like that. So, some mayo. Just going to do, I don't know. What do you think that is? Quarter cup, something like that. Just making enough for uh, tonight, really. So, we're just eyeballing it. So, we'll say quarter cup. It's about a quarter cup. I'm just wiping my spoon so I don't have to use a bunch of them. Dill relish. I don't do sweet relish at all. So we're going to do a nice tablespoon of that. Oh, a little bit more because it's relish, right? I love dill pickles. Some good old yellow mustard. If you're uh, making this for anything, ooh, eh, that's about right. Add a little more. About a tablespoon. <laughs> and about a tablespoon of white vinegar. Now, I'm using Duke's Mayo. So, that's actually uses apple cider vinegar in the Duke's Mayo. That's why Duke's is so awesome. But if you wanted to take this a little bit more sweet, you can use whatever vinegar you want. Man. You do you. It doesn't matter. And... We're going to do about a half teaspoon granulated garlic or granulated onion. That was the onion and granulated garlic. 
again, half teaspoon. You don't want to add too much spice in here because it gets grainy. And then we're going to do half teaspoon smoked paprika. About a quarter teaspoon celery seed. Celery salt, if that's what you got. That's fine. And a little cayenne. Again, this is really up to you. Your taste, you can omit it entirely, but that um, that heat with that vinegary, you know, it's it's really good, man. The vinegary flavor, it's it's tasty. So now I'm just gonna grab a smaller spoon. We're gonna get this mixed up. Let's do a nice turn. Make sure it's mixed real good. Sometimes I add a little salt. It just depends after I taste it. And I always add pepper at the end. Make sure I'm not, my spoon's not contaminated with uh, herbs and spices. Give it a little love, see what's up. Oh, beautiful. That's it. I'm telling you, it's like, Big Mac sauce, but just like on meth, man. With a little bit of heat behind it, stuff is awesome. Seriously, it's great, great, great on burgers. So, all right, we'll be back. I decided I'm gonna make my fries. Um, real talk, if I have fries with anything, they're usually frozen fries, and I usually toss them in the air fryer because this is a pain in the ass. But when you're in the mood and you have the time, this is worth it. Um, we'll get them cut. We're going to blanch them. And um, that way, when it comes to fries, the worst enemy for crispy, crispy fries is the starch. Man. you got to get it out of there. So um, we're going to cut them. We're going to soak them in some water. As soon as our hot water is boiling, we're going to throw our potatoes in there. We're just going to blanch them for a few minutes, pull them out, dry them. And then we'll fry them. So um, what we're going to do here, let's put the fry blade in here. You can hand cut these, of course. Let's see. Not going to do super thick. I'm just going to use some russets here. We grab a few of them. I'm doing skin on. Because they're homemade fries. You gotta do skin on, man. Probably do four of them. Should be enough. So, let me, uh, let me just make sure I'm uh, a little too thin. Let's bring this down. I gotta find my handle. And a little more. All right, let me find my handle. Fall my guard. I just foreseen some serious issues. My hands are so torn up for being in the garage. I can be a little careless sometimes. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna get these guys rolling. And this is about the size we're doing here. Check these out. I'll show you and I'll bang the rest of these out. See that? Beautiful. Not too big, not too small. Perfect. And then I'm just going to throw them over here. I got some water, some salt dissolved in it. Always salt your water. Always. Pasta, potatoes, if you're cooking in water, season that shit. All right. So I'm going to throw them in there. Bang the rest of these up. All right. Can of homemade fries without fry seasoning. No, you don't need to shake anything out of bottles. You can make your own. Most people have all these seasonings in their house for that one recipe that you made, you know, back in 83. You never used them again. Let's make some fry seasoning. So first, 
let me grab my good salt because when it comes to finishing, cooking, anything, my Maldon flake is the king. And let me grab a teaspoon. So what we're going to do, we're going to do two teaspoons. I'm going to make some of this and save it. Two teaspoons salt. We are going to do two teaspoons of black pepper. I like a nice coarse. It's just what I use. So now we're going to do a teaspoon granulated onion. These are all going to be, you know, kind of your typical staples. You can't even see me, can you? Kind of, a little bit. Teaspoon granulated garlic. Teaspoon of smoked paprika. You can use ancho chili powder in here as well. It's real good. We are going to do a half teaspoon of celery seed. Salt if you got it. Teaspoon of oregano. Nice earthiness. Teaspoon of parsley. That helps you eat with your nose first. And, yep, cayenne. I'm going to do about a half teaspoon of cayenne. Eh, you know what? I'm going to throw a little more in there. Feeling it. Feeling it tonight. And that's it, guys. Seriously. And that is a, it, it's super good. I would use my hands for this, but I have torn my hands up. And this uh, seasoning will hurt. Just like so. Fry seasoning. So, All right, we'll be back. All right, so I got our fries going here. Just blanch them off. I just like to just, until they get limp, that's it. And then kill them. This helps keep them nice and fluffy. And, you know, just that creamy potato inside. And then your outside gets nice and crisp, man. These work great if you're making steak fries, too. But my wife hates steak fries, so. But I'm all right with that. And then we're just going to come on over here to the sink. Burn my hands again to, for the fifth time today. I'm not invincible anymore, guys. Getting old now. And we're just going to strain these out. Just like so. And then we are just going to throw these out. Out busting them up too much. Which it looks like I already did. Which kind of pisses me off, but whatever. And then I am just going to spread them out a little. Damn, I broke a lot of them, didn't I? Shit. Just going to let them sit there. I'm going to throw a piece of paper towel right along the top just to dab that top off. Try not to mess with them too much more. And that's it. So I'm just going to let them hang out. And then we'll fry them up. All right. So we're at 375 over here. So we are going to get some fries down. Now, since we blanched them, I went a little bit over. Pisses me off, but whatever. These aren't going to take long. So we don't want to crowd the pan. We don't want our grease temp to go down. And we don't want that to happen either. So. So I'm going to let them go for a few minutes, just till they're nice golden brown. The insides will already be done. They're quick like this. Just going to throw them out on a rack, let them dry, get the rest of the batches, and I'm just going to keep them in the oven. Got the oven at just a warm 170. All right, so we're about halfway through our fries here. Got our pan nice and hot. 
using the carbon steel tonight. These guys are going in. Just drop them down. And don't touch them. Unless you miss it. Put it on top of another one. Then you can touch it. Theory Maisley, cut it out. Oh boy. It's like having two kids that bark. All right, so these are going to shrink down a little bit. Then I'll get them all centered in the pan, but it is what it is. We had an extra. All right, so these have been going for a few minutes here. Oh, look at that beautiful char on the bottom. I love carbon steel. All the benefits of cast iron with all the things that aren't so great about iron. It heats up quicker, it cools down quicker. So if you're regular cooking, you got better control over your heat. Just love it. All right. Now, since these are going to be sitting, still going to hold plenty of heat, especially if you're using a cast iron. So I'm going to take this down and I'm going to cheese them up. All I do is just crisscross when I'm doing sliders stuff. It's like so. All right. So we got our grease going. All I did was kill the heat over here and half lit at this just to keep everything warm, not cooking anymore. So we're going to bang out our, uh, hey, sis it. We're going to bang out our um, crispy leeks here. I'm going to use tongs. Let me step you back so you can actually see what I'm doing. Turn this guy. There we go. Look at that. So we're just going to come right out of the buttermilk. Mix them up for any curding, you know. Grab a tong full. Toss them in the dredge. Try to break them up a little bit. They stick together. It's no problem. You kind of like that, you know. And then into our oil. Now these literally just take minutes, man. They're, they don't take long at all. Make sure that they're all out of the dredge. Oh, there's a sleeper down there. So. Move them around. Man, that'd be good. Awesome topping for a burger, man. Especially when you got the pretzel buns and the burger sauce. It just does things, guys. So, here, I'll just give you a quick look so you get a watch. Look at that. Come on. Beautiful. All right, I'm going to let them go for like maybe 30 more seconds or so and just throw them out on some paper towel and uh, finish the rest of them off. All right, guys, let's build one of these out real quick. Super easy. Grab one of your patties. Ready to go. Been resting nicely. Take your burger sauce. Toasted the um, pretzel buns, by the way. Take some of your... Uh, Crispy leeks, don't be scared. Toss them on there. A little arugula, some freshness, pepperiness, all that other good stuff. Stick a little sun to that. Just like that, guys. Come on. That's a good slider right there. Yum, yum, yum. All right, I'm going to bang the rest of these out, and we're going to eat, man. So, I know you guys have seen burgers probably a million times, but funny enough is when I post, like, you know, just Instagram or whatever, a lot of people ask me. So, here it is, my burger sauce, some crispy leeks, arugula, forget your lettuce. I'm telling you, just try it. It's awesome, man. Got some homemade fries, 
just eh. They taste good, but they I wasn't paying attention. So, but what else did we make? I think that's it. So, all right, guys, that's it. That's all I got.